Welcome to the She Wins Podcast. I'm your host, Heather Sumlin, and today I'm interviewing Sophie Brzezinski. She is Miss Alabama USA 2023. She's a videographer, a very successful young lady, and I can't wait to catch up with her and learn more about what makes her her. Sophie, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Okay, so outside of your pageant experience, tell me more about what makes Sophie Sophie. Yes, so I am the current Miss Alabama USA, and I'll actually be giving up my title on June 1st, and I'm so excited to see who the next girl will be to get to have this journey, but there's a lot more to me than just pageants. I started pageants when I was a sophomore in high school, but one of the other things that I really love and like a core value of my life is hospitality and service and really leading everything with that heart of service. And when I was in high school, I started my own videography business and it is a wedding specializing in weddings videos by Sophie B. And it has really been a whole journey. I mean, that is a whole other story, but that has been a whole journey of how I started my own business and how it got to where it is today and kind of how it has affected me in my whole life. Okay, so you were how old when you decided, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna be a business owner? <laughs> well, I don't think I decided that moment that I was going to be a business owner. I think I had very little idea of what was actually going to happen. But I was a sophomore in high school, so I was 15. And to be honest, I never had any interest in filming videos. But then my teacher, I was super close with her. I think relationships are just always so important in making those connections. And so I really wanted to go to her wedding. But she wasn't inviting students. And so she was like, well, you can film my wedding and you can go. And so I filmed my very first wedding on my iPhone. I think I had an iPhone 7 at the time and created it on iMovie. And then one of her bridesmaids asked me to film her wedding. And then I had another bridesmaids ask me. And then it kind of turned it into this whole thing. And so I was filming these um, weddings on my iPhone. And then I remember, so at this time I couldn't even drive. So my parents were having to actually like, drop me off at these weddings and pick me up, which is kind of funny. And then my dad was like, okay, well, I don't know if you're really a real videographer. And I was like, wait, what do you mean I'm not a real videographer? And so I always like to say, whenever someone tells me that I can't do something or tells me that I'm not doing something, I love to prove them wrong. I'm very stubborn. But so I was like, okay, okay, fine. I'll take that. And so then I went and reached out to someone on Instagram about interning with them. And so I did an internship in high school for two years and it really just took off from there. So you never know what's going to lead to the next thing. So what was maybe a defining moment in your life or even in your career? Yeah, there's been a lot of defining moments. I feel like in my life. And I feel like I've lived a lot of different life experiences. I'm 22. I'll about, I'm about to be 23. And one of the main things would have to be is you never know what someone else is going through. I think I learned this pretty early on is you never know what's going on in someone else's life. And so never judge a book by a cover, never judge a person by their cover. And you never know what that person has experienced. So it's so important to always treat them with kindness and with grace, because you never know what might be going on when they walk away from that conversation with you. And one of the things that I've found very important and impactful in my life is to always give someone that you meet two different chances and meeting them. And one of those opportunities when you meet them is to be in their own environment. So if you're always just meeting people in your environment, it's very hard to get to know them. So it's really important to get to know them also in their own environment. So is that how you keep yourself from prejudging people too much is you make sure that you give them a chance to show you who they are in their own mm -hmm. world? Yes. And also give people a second chance. You know, you might, I think first impressions are so important, but also you never know what news that person just had 10 minutes before they met you. You never know what was going on in their lives. So maybe just give them another chance. Have you ever felt like you've been prejudged by other people? Oh, 100%. I think. 100% because so often I think people just look right at me and they see this person that probably seems like they have their whole life together and has all this accomplishments and things planned out. But deep down, I think there's so many things that have gone on behind the scenes and so much that goes into making the things happen. And I think a lot of people, especially when I won Miss Alabama USA, they were like, oh my gosh, you don't have time for anything now. 
And it was really funny because I was like, no, I actually have so much time right now because I'm not filming all of these weddings right now. You all just never saw everything that went on behind the scenes. But now that I'm sharing my life more publicly, it's like you see everything that I'm doing. So that was definitely a challenge and just not judging people. And I think oftentimes I am prejudged, but I always want people to get to know me. And it's like, you never know. <laughs> I remember when I met you at the RPM retreat. So that's how we met. We yeah. I sponsor RPM mm -hmm. Productions, which is Miss Alabama, Louisiana, North Carolina, and South Carolina competitions. And there was the retreat. And Sophie was the first person to come over and introduce herself to me. I just kind of showed up at Top Golf while they were already kind of playing and talking to each other and team building all the things. And you were the first one to come over and just say, hey, I think I'm supposed to know you. <laughs> I'm Sophie. <laughs> and it was it was really refreshing and helpful to just start having that dialogue. It was very, very conversational. So where did you learn how to network? Okay, well, I think networking is one of the most important skills that you can learn. Because I don't think it's something that everyone's just born with. I've always been a very curious person. I've always love to kind of see who's around me, who's in the room, how can I get to know them? Because you never know what interesting things you're going to learn about someone or how maybe later in life they might help you with something or they can be someone that you can call on. And so I think I learned this from my parents. I have very social parents, but always just getting to know people and kind of when you walk in a room, it's like, okay, who's around me? Who are these people? Have I met them before? And it was really funny because you were talking to my directors and you just showed up and you're sitting there. And I'm like, well, she seems like she knows that she's supposed to be here, but I have no idea who she is. So let's go find out. And so I thought it was really fun getting to meet you. And one thing I actually learned, I love this quote, I learned last year is at the LEAP conference in, I was at UCLA and it was always be interested, not interesting. And I think that is such a great tool to keep when you're talking to someone new is always ask them questions about themselves. People love to talk about themselves. So if you ask them questions about themselves, you can get to know them on a deeper level. Okay, so speaking of a question that maybe is about you, how do you define winning? I ask everyone this. Okay, how do I define winning? I think winning is very different in different terms. I like to justify everything if you can't tell by now. But um, I think winning is very different in every situation. And it really is your own definition. But to me, winning is when I set a goal and I'm able to achieve part of that goal. You know, I think my goals often change through the process and through the journey, but setting that goal and seeing, okay, how can I accomplish this goal? And when I win at something, it's achieving that goal and helping that success. If you could go back and talk to that high school Sophie who had the camera at the weddings, like what would you tell her at 15? Well, I think she had no idea what she was getting into. No idea. And it's so crazy because during COVID is actually when I feel like my business really took off because people were still having weddings. They were just having them in their backyard. And so there was live streaming that was going on. There was all these different tools. But I think just to give myself grace, I think I was very hard at myself to be so perfect from the get-go and to be this business owner and to be this videographer that had been in the industry for so long, but in reality, I was only 15. So I think if I could just give her a hug and say, it's going to be okay, take a deep breath, have some grace and learn when to say no. I think there's so many opportunities. I'm always like, say yes. But I think in that moment is learn how much you can handle and how much you can take on and learn how to say no to certain things. So was there a solution that you had to find along the way in order to reach success? Yes. Sometimes you have to ask for help. There was a time when I filmed, let's see, there was 18 weddings I filmed in one summer and it was pretty crazy. It was crazy that There's year. Not 18 I think total weeks. I filmed. There's not even 20. 18 weeks in a summer. How many are you doing on a weekend? There was two or three weekends, two or three weddings in a weekend. It got really crazy because all of the weddings from COVID, people were having double weddings and then people were rescheduling their weddings. And so I had filmed, I think, like 28 weddings that year. While I was a full-time college student, it was an interesting, interesting time, a little lack of sleep. But so I think really asking for help and just knowing it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to not have it all figured out. But having those people around you that you trust and that network of people that you can really rely on is so important. 
So it sounds to me like it's a lot about building the connections, building the relationships mm-hmm. so you can actually ask for help for the right people. Yes, because there's so many people I think we can all ask for help from, but it's knowing that circle that's really there to support you and really there to nurture you and help you when you need that help and trusting them. What's something that you wish you had done differently if you could go back, whether it's in in pageant or in personal life or in business or school? I think not trying to do so much at once. I'm often the type of person that just loves to pile, pile, pile on stuff. And I love that. But I think sometimes slowing down and really being in the moment and realizing, okay, let's have this happen. And then when that is over, we'll move on to the next thing and not trying to pile everything on to where it's like, at some point you're going to break. And then that's when you're just forced to slow down. So that would be one thing. So is your videography business, is that your future or was that to get you through school? So I don't really even know when I started if I had a specific goal for it. So it kind of started taking off and I was like, okay, I actually think I'm pretty good at this. So I'm getting a lot of weddings. I really love working the weddings because I love the service industry and I just love event planning and love being a part of those special moments. And I think sometimes I love chaos a little bit and I love being calm and chaos. And so then I was pre-dental in college. I went to Auburn University or Eagle, but I was pre-dental and I was like, okay, how can I graduate from dental school debt-free? So then it became a goal to film enough weddings and to make enough money to save up to be able to graduate from dental school debt-free. And I was able to accomplish that, which I was really proud of, but I'm not sure if I see myself going to dental school anymore. It's kind of crazy how Lots of things happened, and when I won Miss Alabama USA, there was just so many different opportunities that presented themselves that I was like, okay, I'm going to see where this takes me and really just trust the process of where I feel like God and where the universe is leading me. Well, you can always go to school, right? Exactly. I can always go back. I'm like, if I'm having a quarter-life crisis at the end of my 20s, I'll go back. My application is just sitting on my computer, so I see it every time I open my computer, but I'm like, I don't know if that's the path for me. So did you ever think to yourself, I'm making a really good living, filming weddings, working for myself, why I'm why am I here? Have you, did you ever have that thought or were you very like pre-dental, I'm going to go to dental school, I've got to finish? No, I definitely, I definitely always had those thoughts and it was always something that it was like, okay, I'm going to go to dental school and then maybe five years down the road, I'll do this. And it was kind of like, why am I always finding something else to do besides dental school? And when I was filling out my Miss USA paperwork, it didn't even cross my mind to put that I wanted to be a dentist. And I was like, you know, that might be something I should look more into that. That's not what I put down. Didn't really cross my mind. Oh, that's, that really is eye opening. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you should have. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause I think I always, And I know a lot of other people probably feel this way too. It's just having a plan. And so you go to college, dental school's four more years, and then you get a job after dental school as a dentist, or you go and specialize. But there's something I think really scary about not knowing and kind of being like, I don't know exactly where this career path is going to take me. And so kind of right now where I'm at, I'm like, you know, I have a lot of opportunities and I'm not quite sure where it's going to go but really just trusting myself and trusting that, okay, I have the skills that are going to get me through this and I'm going to figure it out. It's going to all be okay. So what was your favorite part about your year as Miss Alabama? My favorite part, there's so many different fun parts, but I think just getting to meet all of the different kids and getting to meet the people. And it's so fun to really get to have those one-on-one connections with them. It's very interesting because I think one of the things I really realized this year is I don't necessarily really love being the center of attention and being the center of attention at events. I'm definitely one of those people that loves to just be in the corner, hanging out, talking with people and getting to know people. I'd say I'm very social and love to be at these events, but I don't necessarily know that I love to be the center of attention. So I definitely learned that. And then one of the things that I really learned this year is you never know the impact that you can have on other people. I remember I was reading to a classroom. They were so sweet. They were in second grade. And there's this little boy that was so nervous to ask me a question because usually we do Q and A's at the end. And he was so nervous to ask me a question. And I saw him in the corner of my eye and I was like, all right, what's your question? And he goes, so 
I was wondering if you've ever won a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> and I was like, no, I have not ever won a Nobel. But it was just so funny getting to hear these questions and what these kids, their curiosity and where their imagination is just wandering. And you really are able to have an impact on them because later it went into a conversation of, no, I might not have won a Nobel Peace Prize, but these are the ways that you can make a difference. And you don't necessarily have to have a title or have a significance of any sort to really still make a difference in other people's lives. You can do that every day. So one thing that I think is really important is before you crown your successor, you need to set another <laughs> goal. So what's next for you? What's next? So I'm actually headed this summer. I will be nannying in Europe. I'm really excited about it. Yes, oh, that's it was fun. one of these things that really fell right into my lap. It's so random, but that's very on brand with me. <laughs> but I will go from crowning my successor on June 1st to the next day, hopping on a flight to Paris. So I'm like, never a dull moment. But I remember just being in this waiting season the past year of just being like, I don't really know what's next, but I feel like I'm just meant to be right here, kind of waiting in the peacefulness, kind of figuring out what's next. And there was this, this waiting season, but I don't think that a waiting season is ever or should ever be a wasted season. It's really a season of growth and discovering more about yourself and discovering more of your purpose. So it was really funny. I was walking into a Pilates class and there was this lady that was asking, so what are you doing this summer? And she was kind of asking who I was. And then, you know, about 15 minutes later, we're exchanging numbers. And it was the start of going with her to nanny her children in Paris. So crazy adventure, but you never know where life will take you. That's a really interesting way to get to Paris. You know, it is. And it's really funny because I had this dress that I was like, oh, I could just see myself in Italy or Paris just like there. But I don't really know if I'll be going there anytime soon. But little did I know, I was at a Tavares. That is so, I, now I'm going to have to talk with you after you get back and find out what you learned about yourself being an Annie in, oh, an, in a foreign country. I've Annie before, and it was something that I was like, you know, I'll never do this again. Like, I loved it, but I just don't think I'll ever do this again. But one thing I really have learned in life is never say never, because you just might end up at that place. And so I never thought that I'd be Nanny again, but here I am, so I'm excited. If you could um, give advice to anyone who either wants to compete in pageant or wants to start their own company, what advice do you have? To really just go for it and really trust yourself. I think that's one of the most important things is to trust your skill set and to trust what you're doing because so often I feel like we lack confidence in ourselves. I do this all the time. It's like, oh, well, what if this? What if that? And it's like, there's always going to be someone else out there trying to do the same thing. But you really have to trust and know yourself that you're confident in your own skills and your own abilities. Is there anything you would do differently during your year as Miss Alabama, if you could go back in time? I would learn to not pack so much. That would be one thing, because I think for Miss USA, I literally overpacked and Sometimes I don't like having all of the decisions. So then I would pack all these different outfits for things. I remember Miss USA, I packed probably like eight suitcases. There's such a funny picture of all of our suitcases. And I didn't even probably wear half of that stuff. But really, mm -hmm. just being confident in yourself. And just now I feel like I'm like, okay, I know what I'm going to wear. I'm going to pack this. You can be prepared. But like, I don't need to be over prepared. It's okay. And really just being prepared for that moment. And so I think that was kind of a silly one. But something I would probably go back is to just take a deep breath and realize that there's only you in this situation. And it's really difficult because so often we want to be understood. We want other people to understand what we're going through, but there's no other Miss Alabama USA 2023. There's only one. And so you really have to just trust in yourself and trust that you were made for this. I always love saying you were made for this moment. You were made to walk this path and really just knowing that this is where you're supposed to be. There's a reason that you are here and you just have to trust in that. Any last words for our listeners? I think one thing that I really love to just kind of live my daily life is always shining from the inside out and realizing that, uh, let's see, my I'll show you my screensaver right here. It always says, let's see. Oh, I can't see it. Oh. I can't read okay, it. You have to I'll, I'll read it. It says, if the light that is on you is brighter than the light that is in you, the light that is on you will destroy you. And that was really just my kind of motto for the year is 
you've got to be able to shine bright from the inside out. And, you know, things are going to get crazy. Things are going to get rough. But really knowing that your worth comes from inside and really shining that light to everyone else. Okay, so I'm so excited because we're going to talk more. And if you're not a Patreon member, join a Patreon membership because Sophie and I are going to tackle how, I mean, one question I'm going to have for you, and I hope you're ready for it, is how to really shine from the inside out. How do you know if the light on you is too bright? I think it'll be a really fun discussion. And then we're going to tackle some fun things for our pageant members on Patreon. I might pick her brain a little bit more about Miss USA and Miss Alabama and what it took to become who she is. Y'all have a blessed rest of your day. Thank you so much, Sophie, for for joining. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You'll have definitely I'm excited to tackle these next questions. So people will have to tune in because I've got some good, good stories for this. Oh, I'm excited. Like this episode. If you do, share it with a friend. Join my Patreon membership so we can see what Sophie has to say.